are back. No Pokemon in our system, but Mario themes. Our tech director was just like coming them. How did it go? So I know that at least. Yeah, keep going, keep going. My ears. I want to hear the humming. Keep going. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, and then like and then the rest of the song happens. Dude, yeah. Dude, oh. dude, dude. <laughs> I can't really remember the whole thing. Rest of song. Okay. Mm. Well, we'll have to remember that humming Let's start in our head. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna sleep tonight yeah, just it. hearing you hum that and then say and the rest of it just over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> but why don't we get to our next topic? Uh, we have uh, Malik who's gonna talk about the fact that esports orgs are becoming more of a popular thing. Take it away. Yeah, so um, LeBron James' son just got signed to Face Clan, LeBron which James. was rumored. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, it was uh, it was rumored for a long time, but nobody could really like get any solid facts. And then also, uh, Post Malone just became a partial owner in Envy, um, which is huge. Uh, I believe that uh, Pusha T uh, is involved in uh, Chaos Gaming as well. So we're seeing yep. a lot of, like, rappers, and obviously there's people like Rick Fox and, um, you know, the same Drake. people that own the Bus Boston Uprising, own the Patriots. So there's really, like, this sort of blend between traditional sports and media recently and esports. Um, and I just, you know, kind of want to talk about that and your guys' takes on that. And especially League of Legends, we've seen them break into music now and it doing extremely well. Oh, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, you play uh, League of Legends. <laughs> I think like a week, a week ago, they released, um, they, well, they, I think it's maybe two years ago, they came out with like a virtual group, like a virtual musical group of some mm -hmm. of their characters in the game. And they literally have become like, like people who don't even play the game, like became fans of them as musical artists. Like these are literally characters in the game that became like KDA pop stars. Amazing, I did- Or sorry, uh, K-pop, KDA is what they're called. KDA. But like, okay. like Korean pop is the music that they make. Mm -hmm. Yes, pop stars was their first single, yeah. And they came out with a second one, like last week last week and that was that was okay not as good as pop stars yeah it's, um, it's not no. as good i agree <laughs> not I even close that is on the internet to pop stars so you <laughs> that's your treat that's but chat it, treat. it's definitely yeah. interesting to see that they literally take characters from their game that has like nothing to do with with music or like you know korean pop culture on a global scale and have literally successfully yeah. created like virtual like musical icons even like because in yeah. you know in korean pop culture they really they really like idolize a lot of these groups and um kda uh riots <laughs> uh, korean group like are getting that same kind of treatment it's very interesting and that's that's right. kind of like what i would say like gorillas right like the oh, band sure. gorillas. Yeah. being famous yeah. are not actually being real right and allows yep. for collaborations of different artists um when you're talking you know with kda you don't have to have the same voices uh voice each character every time as the gorilla does but i think what we're seeing with gaming in general um is how they're branching out to these other realms um to kind of grow in popularity and that is definitely working for uh riot with kda and when it comes to like esports orgs and just esports in general being paired to sports, I think that's like the common pairing from the start that um, the community has been trying to make because you had those questions when traditional sports people look at esports and they're like, well, this isn't sports. And now we're seeing that kind of melt mm. together. We're yeah. seeing esports on sports channels, on TV, a sports yeah. broadcast. And now that we're seeing that, I think it's just going to continue to grow in popularity. Um, so I feel like that's not going to go anywhere. And it's good, too, because then you're seeing more money being put into these orgs, being put into the community that could really thrive and continue to grow the community from what we know it. Yep. Right. Yeah. And Agreed. Uh, it's It's awesome to see all these, like, big names, whether it's in music or, I mean, 
not really many people in like acting has gotten involved in this, but like, especially in music, we're seeing a lot of big names getting involved and, uh, and, and in sports, trying to get involved in esports. And you look at esports as a whole, for as big as it currently is, it's still kind of in its infancy and yeah. has a really? long way to go. So I think it's awesome. Uh, some people have their issues with it, but I think it's awesome to see someone like Post Malone getting involved or obviously when Rick Fox did it, having LeBron James' son join FaZe. Like, it's yeah. weird. It makes a weird headline, but join it's cool. Phase as like yeah. a streamer or like as like a player yeah. or well, just like a sponsor. And that's that's and they didn't great really, question yeah <laughs> it seems like it might be one of those streaming and phases kind of transitioned there are a lot of esports organizations mainly managed teams phase has kind of taken on like the almost agent like personality yeah. yep. management content role. creators yes. yeah so they they've taken it to a new step and i like that because you do get like post malone who's from texas investing in envy gaming and then you see all of these big names investing into esports organizations at yep. their home roots yep. but then you also have the other side where phase is starting to pick up personalities like they pick up rappers they pick up you know they're starting to create a brand and an empire and originally when esports you know started getting going and trying to become mainstream they took a lot from traditional sports and uh tencent just had a holding meeting and their coo uh mark wren he was talking about how now traditional sports are having to take after esports because of the environment that we're in. So 100%. being able to see, especially with F1 and NASCAR, when the Grand Prix got canceled and them moving on to that, you know, digital landscape, that was a huge jump. And that was something that brought the idea of, you know, games as a competitive medium to the limelight. Yeah. The thing about esports is that it's so accessible. And it's something that people don't really realize they're interested in watching until you watch it. Like, yeah. I, I think the best example is something like a fighting game tournament. You look at whether it's, uh, which, by the way, I'm hosting one currently on my Twitch channel. It's going to be this Wednesday. Um, okay. And, <laughs> uh, but like, you, you, look at, you look at fighting games, right? And it's like, yeah, okay, they're cool. Like, you play them casually. But then when you watch somebody playing a fighting game, whether it's Street Fighter, whether it's Mortal Kombat, whether it's even something like Super Smash Bros., when you watch it being played at the highest level, it's super entertaining. And what was so great about esports and what I think helped esports rise to the level that it has is how accessible it is to watch this stuff. You don't need a Twitch account. You just go to the link and you watch it. You don't got to pay a service. You don't got to pay for cable. You don't got to do this, that, and the other. You just go to the Twitch page where it's being streamed at and you watch it and you enjoy it. Or if it's on YouTube, you go there. You know, it's, it's a very accessible right. thing where obviously – you know, mainstream sports, the NBA, the NFL, all that stuff is still very difficult to access. And I feel, you know, as time goes on and as esports continues to rise uh, bigger than the the part that it's at right now, we're going to probably start seeing people or places like the NBA try and transition even further into like digital and and letting that stuff be more accessible, whether they go full on like streaming an NBA game on Twitch or something. I don't know, but it's just cool. It's cool to see I think the level that esports already. have they done that? Yeah, I, they, so, yeah. I did. I missed it then. They did but old I, reruns uh, back in okay. May uh, or no yeah. March. Yeah, yeah, right. I've seen that. I've seen that on YouTube where they rerun I, like old yeah. NBA yeah. matches. But it could like even rerunning old NBA matches or even running like what if they had like an All Star game, but like you know like the All Star celebrity game, but with Twitch celebrities. Right, like sure, yeah. there's so many different partnerships, and I feel like sports media now has to do it just because of how the state of cable and the state of TV for yep. the next generation, um, being online and being accessible through online platforms that are free. I'm not saying put all your content there, but there's certainly content that could live on um, on those channels for those uh, sports broadcasters. So it, it's even interesting in COVID that we've seen how the NBA had to adjust, how sports media is um, hosting and reporting on sports, but using... Um, assets that we use on Twitch that you see yeah. broadcasters on yeah. Twitch use the technology. Yep. Um, so you're seeing that that gap being narrowed down. That it's right. just a matter of time where we do kind of see the merge, especially as 
the generation that grew up with esports gets older and now wants to see esports on sports channels. And I think, you know, the head honchos at those stations know that and they're just preparing for that. The question is, though, does that now, um, because I feel like earlier when we started seeing celebrities, not necessarily when Drake was um, partnered with 100 Thieves, but like maybe earlier on, like before that, it kind of mm -hmm. seemed like it was just something to do because it was like esports was like, like a expensive hobby. It, it, yeah. Not only an expensive hobby because I feel like it's not that expensive when you look at like how celebrities partner with like liquor brands and creating their own makeups and everything like that but yeah. it was more of like a, a just a term people want to use it was like it would come up in conversations and you're known to be cool because you know what esports is so celebrities would mm. get on it and it was kind of like okay but do they really know what esports is and right. you would have people in the esports community be like oh well this is just something that they're trying to do to gain popularity. And you know what I say? Who cares? If they're doing that to gain proper popularity, that just means more money in our pockets. Yeah. 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 Or more content that we get to take in. The hell? Try, <laughs> um, popularity of esports. But do you think now that we have now that we have more celebrities joining organizations that that could hurt the organization's name in terms of a reputable team? Like FaZe does not perform well. Um, we've seen that over and over again, right? Do you think their yeah. focus on content creation has taken away from what we're seeing with their competitive teams? I and think their focus their competitive teams. I think their focus on content cre content creation comes as a product to their competitive teams not performing as well. Uh, I think they realize, like, listen, we we can't reel in the talent. We can't get the best of the best. So let's just get people who make good content, who are big streamers. And let's just lean into that. And I feel like that works, honestly. I feel like, you know, as esports is a very successful thing. And I don't want this to seem like any disrespect to that. I think it's a growing brand and will continue to grow. But at the end of the day, I feel like for most people that consume this stuff, they would much rather watch someone of the likes of a Tim the Tatman or like a ninja yeah. who are just like pretty good, you know, better than average, but obviously not the best rather than watching the best the best play. So you look at someone like a team like FaZe who were like, well, we're not we're not winning a million tournaments. Uh clearly that's not where a source of income can be very viable for us. Let's just get some really good content creators. Let's sign some deals. Let's get a portion of their revenue and let's call it a day. Yeah. And I've seen I've seen the comparison a lot that FaZe is like the barstool sports of esports. They're you know, yeah. they're kind of there for all of your, you know, the frag reels in just about every video game you can imagine. They've got yep. the personalities, they've got the events, they, you know, do a, an opening on Melrose Avenue. They're like trying to be the premier, the top, the kind of just the all inclusive. But I think there is an underlying, you know, there's an underlying boundary that like you said, Camille, no matter what happens with these, you know, people that they're bringing on, it's going to boost esports either way. It's going to yeah. get the name out there. And it's a lot easier in a boardroom to throw out an NBA player's name or Post Malone or yeah. someone that's, you know, more widely known rather than Tim the Tatman and Ninja and all these. They're still trying to get that reputation with the yeah, suits. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And that's the thing. It, it is bridging that older generation of like people in the boardroom making the big decisions, understanding what esports is, right? Um, they're, they yeah. know it, they, they've seen it, but do they really know the community? And I think that's, it's, you're, you, you hit it right on the nose. That's exactly why you see those celebrity partnerships, because it is easier to make those deals when you mention these celebrity names, as opposed to the, the Twitch stars or the esports stars, right? Um, my thing is, <laughs> now, is this growing the problem, though, of the legitimacy of organizations? Do you think that we're going to see celebrities, like, you know, we saw with... Um, Rick Fox, right? Like he had that team. They did fairly well uh, for some yep. time. But do you think that we're going to see more celebrities sign their own organizations 
and would that hurt the legitimacy of these um like of the competitive side of esports because like at what point is it that now phase isn't like because esports is interesting because it's yep. heavily tied with content creation you get what yep. i'm saying so right. yep. you have the performance side how you're doing competitively but then you have the content creation and everything that lives out of season um from when those game when those their leagues are going on but but can one if you focus more heavily on one does that hurt the overall legitimacy for say the competitive side if you're focusing on the content creation side i don't i don't think, think so. so yeah, yeah. i <laughs> yeah actually well i think one of the really unique things about esports versus like real sports is that literally everyone can play a video game. And I think mm -hmm. that's uh, part of like the the magic of it because on one hand, we kind of, well, in the beginning for sure, we kind of marketed a lot of pro teams as like the elite, the top of the top. And then once yeah. they started to transition into content creation, a lot of it was them like talking about how they got there, um, you know, talking about whatever their specific skills were. Yeah. And then it became really, like intimate in a sense where you know like even like even i would would watch some league of legends and just like oh maybe i could do that you know if you really put in the work i could do that but you know i, I don't really look at like real sports like basketball or like really physically demanding sports and think yeah i could do that <laughs> you know <it's> like, <laughs> I, I think, it, I, think I, like, do. No. I think like that's a really <laughs> interesting thing about esports that makes um that makes like the competitive and the content creation side go really hand in hand in like a very beneficial way that doesn't necessarily ruin the legitimacy, but I can kind of see what you're saying in terms of like phase because phase is almost like all in with the content creation, but they've always been that way. Yeah. yeah. And yeah then, that's, that's the inception of it, right? Quick yeah. scoping yeah. and all that, like, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and and, and, and think... like building on that moment. Yeah. When you like get a quick scope and you build on that moment, like, Oh my God. You know, this mm -hmm. is like the play and like everyone yeah. has had that moment. For sure. You know? uh, Yukio in chat says, I hate how they keep trying to mimic sports rather than trying to do their own thing. Um, and I think do they're they referring to esports, but like- I think in the now, beginning they definitely were. I think yes. Yeah. Think how uh, Alex was talking about how they would market these teams as like the elite, the top teams. And you would have still were with these poses. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, the real gem is the content creation side, um, and some of the funniest things that live on. Like, um, you know, I'm I'm just thinking about like when you think about any of the behind the scenes with any of those teams. Even if you yeah. look at um, Raptors Uprising, right? Um, yeah. Look at their content creation from their house. Like some of that stuff is hilarious. Um, so, so there is, that is the gem. Um, and if the community knows how to harness that really well and accept it alongside, uh, the community side, uh, sorry, the competitive side, then I think that's when you really are separating yourself from sports and, and not in a negative way. You're just really outshining traditional sports. Yeah, I think. I think traditional sports will only last for so long in their current capacity. I yes. think that esports has a chance to set a new format for how just competitive everything is done. Um, I mean, if you look at some of the NBA matches with what they have set up with now, there's a lot more LED screens. There's a lot, you know, more. So there's good. just more. Yeah, it looks it looks good. And when you look at the League of Legends worlds and the production value of esports, yeah. when they were going on, the production value of esports blows most sports out of the water yep. without yeah. question. Definitely. Yep. That and when you when you look at so with Zed, who is a DJ, and his relationship with the Overwatch League. He's performed, he's endorsed Overwatch, he plays it, he streams it, he's friends with professionals. But he's never signed with anyone, he's never joined an organization, he's never officially been a part of like their branding. But he understands that there is something there and those big events that they do is what's truly going to set them apart. It's the same thing with music and I think why they are bringing a lot of these music artists on because they can put on performances, they can do these digital shows and they can broadcast it live on Twitch with half of the cost of what it would be to go on television and right. pull double, triple the numbers. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. 
Mm -hmm. Um, it's just going to be interesting what partnerships would be next. Like I know earlier Kabu has mentioned, like we don't really see actors going into the esports side, but maybe yeah. it's just a matter of time. Uh, uh, like it probably is. I think you know, know maybe, so. maybe they do a <laughs> type of thing. Like if they're introducing music and, and you know alongside with esports or like those brands in esports, maybe they'll have like some sort of show where it's like an hour long when you have like. A-list actors, and then you go into song, and it's a whole production, right? Like mm-hmm. you really, you really don't know. Just because if um, you're able to do so much in the virtual realm, why the hell not? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. If I mean, you're not trying to change the whole structure of anything, if you're not trying to tear anything down or ruin the good thing that everybody has right now, if you just want to be a part of it, like. Welcome, please let everybody that follows you know about this awesome piece of gaming. Yes, yeah. I agree. Great words to end on with that one.